What up, Headbangers? How you doing? I'm Rob O'Day. I'm Norm Mathers. And welcome to Enigma Media. Today we're chilling with Six Piece, Waking Band, Waking Terra out of North Carolina. How are you guys doing? Doing good, man. Why don't you introduce yourselves and let us know how you guys got started? Okay, I'll go. Um, I'm KP. I do uh, the vo main vocals in uh, Waking Terror and a little bit of screaming. Wicked. Hell yeah. How long have you guys been a band for? Ooh, ah, since 2010. That's when we originally started. Oh, damn, eh? Well, that's... Yeah. Well, we've gone through a, a couple of member changes, so, you know, it's kind of shifted. And so this core that we have right now has been together since 2016, I'd say. Oh, nice. That's That's still pretty decently long. And you yeah. guys are a six piece. You don't usually see a six piece. Do you have two vocalists? Well, we just added Ben, our keyboardist slash guitarist, to the mix. Um, probably the beginning of this year. Um, he was in the band prior as just a, a lead guitarist. Um, he left because he couldn't tour, and then we just brought him back into the fold. Um, this year for the you know the, the extra pretty things and dude's got a crazy uh background vocal so him and i harmonizing it's 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 needed that's awesome it's needed. yeah it's nice when you find someone who works well with you um with harmonies right it's really hard to find another a vocalist who can match with you i i'm i'm, I'm lucky because norman and i when we're actually singing, we sound a lot alike. So if I do want to do screaming, he can do clean scream singing, or vice versa. If I want to sing, he can do the screaming for me. So it's been beneficial for me having a a partner that's that well diverse in his music abilities. Your guys' latest Absolutely. Uh, release. It just adds, adds that next level. It really does. Especially most bands don't think about harmonies, you know? They just kind of... We have one singer or a backup singer who does different parts, but when you actually have bands harmonizing, it adds a whole other element. Your guys' last release, uh, Transition, came out this year, right? How was the experience in recording it? Ooh, man. It was a, it was a process. So we started recording... Uh, I think November of 19 is when they first went in for drum tracks. Um, and then we kind of spaced it out. We had planned on finishing it early 2020, but, you know, March came around, everything kind of shut down. Mm -hmm. And so after that point, we just kind of spaced it out like, okay, well, you know, we got to be careful with who's going to the studio, what kind of combination for that. Um, and so we, I think we did it maybe once a month or something like that to go and kind of fix and, and do this and do that. It was great working with Al Jacob, uh, at warrior sound. Um, he really had a good vision or w we shared a vision about what we wanted to accomplish with, with the tracks. And, uh, I think it turned out great, honestly. Yeah. It's a pretty solid album. Like it sounds the sound of it is well done from beginning to end too. Yeah. And I think it, it only worked because we spaced it out and we had different opportunities to hear the songs over and over. And we're like, okay, wait, 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 let's ch change this. Let's tweak that. Hey, go re-record this, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's not like the normal process where you go in for a couple of weeks, bang it out and then you're done we had an extended amount of time to uh, contemplate everything. Yeah, no, for sure. 
And it's it's nice when you do get to sit down. You're not rushing it. I find that's right. um, it's a, it's right. it's nice when you get to sit down and worry about the little things that you don't like cringe over ten years later. You know what I mean? Where you hear the like, oh god, that sounds so terrible. Exactly. So it's it's definitely <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a lot of those with. Uh... Go ahead. With with our older stuff there's there's some songs where i had to kind of rush in like all right hey you got to do eight tracks today and you know with voices it's tough because you can you can burn it out pretty quickly so you know there's some songs probably at the end of that day where i'm like oh man it's not good it's not good at all <laughs> i really need to do that yeah no i definitely you roll with it i can relate with that i uh some days I'm on on point, and some days I'm like, "Why the fuck did the guys even have me as the singer?" So yeah, it definitely comes down to yeah. the day, and that's for sure. And lots yeah. of practice, mm-hmm. you know. You Rob gotta... always brings it to the studio. Yeah, when we come to record, that's it. I'm lucky because it tends to happen then. But like when I'm recording my like my demo tracks to show the boys. I cringe at my own voice. I'm like, this is terrible. Why the hell yeah. do you guys even want me? <laughs> yes. He's way it, too it hard on himself. Thing. It must be a vocalist thing. <laughs> the is. guys really get on me. And, you know, they're like, dude, why are you beating yourself up? I'm like, it sucks. It's terrible. I should just quit putting it all together. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. No, it's true. It's totally a singer thing. Like, I don't know. I always tell them, I'm like, whenever we're listening, I'm like, oh, this song sounds great, but you guys need a new singer. <laughs> just always, I just rip on myself. <laughs> it's like, right. why not, right? So it definitely, it, I find it entertaining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, a lot of people don't realize that too, because like, it, um, our drummer, he's our producer. And he was like, there, it was a little bit pitchy in some parts. And I'm like, yeah, I know, dude, I'm not like, there's some days where I can hit and some days I sound like a dying cat. <laughs> The days that I sound like a dying cat, I'm like, okay, let's just scream versus singing today. So I find that. uh, Exactly. That's what you do. You're like, okay, I'm doing all the things. You have to, right? It's like you, and a lot of people don't even like take care of their, uh, their voice properly with like drinking tea and warm ups, you know, they just like jump in and they're screaming and singing. Mm -hmm. I have to take like half an hour to 45 minutes to warm up before I do any recording. Or I find same. It, yeah, right. Same. I find like, so a- I'll go into the studio and, uh, you know, he's like, okay, Hey, we're doing vocals today. I say, okay, give me, give me a little while. I go into to the, a room by myself with the hot tea, do my warm up, continue with the tea. And then I switch to, uh, like lukewarm water and, uh, probably about, 30 45 minutes in i'm like okay i'm good let's let's start recording Mm -hmm. yeah it definitely i couldn't imagine walking in right like cold just no warm-ups walk in and start screaming man oh my god like four takes in you're done you're not gonna be able to maintain that it sucks how do you guys go about uh your writing Mm -hmm. process Ooh, our writing process. Uh, you know, it's changed over the years. Um, as far as everybody kind of coming in and putting their own part. But so me and Zach are the original members. We were in the first round of Waking Terra and the only ones left from that time period. Zach's always had kind of the core of the song. Um, you know, he just kind of writes riffs nonstop. And so when we get together for rehearsal, he's like, Hey, I got this new thing. What do you think? Um, and early on, you know, I was still a guitarist in my mind. (laughs) So, uh, I'd say, Hey, we'll try this, try that, blah, blah, blah. And then we start building from there. Um, and with this last album cycle, I think him and Dustin, our lead guitarist kind of came in and just like hashed out some riffs. Hey, I got this riff. Hey, I got this riff. Okay. Can it be a song and (laughs) work it from there and start building. Um, But then it goes through a lot of changes, especially um, since 2015, we went into the studio with Corey Pierce and he produced, produced our album. Corey 
Pierce from God forbid. That's and sick. we were kind of like in college with the writing process with him. Like we learned a lot about the song structure and transitions and, you know, using parts at the right place kind of thing. So we learned a lot from that time period. So now we will even write the, the core of the structure of the song and say, okay, let's go back to it later and keep moving on, add some new stuff, write some new stuff. Then we go back to it and say, okay, do we still like it like this? <laughs> or have we thought of anything different? Um, and we kind of did that with this, this process along with, you know, once we started recording it, it was even more, Hey, I don't like this little part, change this, change that. Um, a lot of my melodies shift from initial writing to recording. Um, I try to write based on feel like as a, as a, a vocalist. So they'll have the song and I say, okay, what does it feel like? And try to let that melody come out naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that I'll go with the melody initially. And I write some lyrics based on that. And I keep playing with it and I'll leave it alone for like a couple of weeks, come back to it and say, okay, oh no, it kind of sucks. <laughs> You know that that vocalist style that sucks i yep. need to do something different and i mean even down to one of our songs breathe um i wrote the lyrics the night before i recorded all the vocals now, i had something prior to that but that night i was like no it really it, it, it's just not sitting right with me and, and, you know the melodies aren't strong enough the it's just not catchy enough kind of thing. And I rewrote those lyrics and went in on Saturday like, okay, hey, here's the song. Here's what I got. I hope you like it because this is what it is. Yeah. That's funny. I did the exact same the thing. Process, man. And, and the guys really get mad. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Through, through the Mist, one of our songs, it was like two days well, I before like I went in. And uh, I, I looked at, I told our guitar player, I'm doing, I'm rewriting the lyrics. I'm not happy with them. <laughs> it's got to be our emotional side as vocalists. You know, it's just, hey, it's not feeling, it's not feeling right. I got to do something else. Mm -hmm. The guys get mad at me sometimes. They're like, dude, come on, man. The first, I, I really love that chorus the first time. And I'm like, no, it sucks. I'm doing something else. No, I totally. Sometimes feel it's good. Sometimes it's bad. I mean, you don't know. Yeah, no, it's, and that's the thing, right? As a vocalist, it's really hard because the band can come up with this dope ass fucking song and then they're like, okay, here, let's see what you do. And then you're just like on point and you're kind of like stuck there on the spot. Like <laughs> what I write right now could just completely botch this fucking song and everyone can hate us. So it's really hard to be, Yes. The first thing somebody listens to when they listen to a song is the vocals. Then eventually, three or four times in, they start to hear the melodies of the guitar sure. and stuff. So it's a very you hard... Start hearing the melodies of the guitar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to be a singer. And it's hard to write catchy, not like poppy, but like hard-hitting choruses and verses that... I don't know. I like to do double entendres. Mm -hmm. Like I take a lot of my writing out of hip-hop and... I like to do a lot of metaphors and a lot of double entendres and stuff. So I have like these weird elaborate lyrics that most people probably will never understand unless they can dive into my brain. <laughs> but it, it it works. I find when I find I it. when I find that one melody or that one line that just continues the flow of inspiration, that's my favorite part. Right. Exactly. You're like, that's it. And you kind of write five lines after that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I tend to sit with my thesaurus. Um, so I write how I'm feeling, whatever that is. And then I look at line by line. And I say, okay, is there a better way to say this? That hasn't been said before, or you know what I mean? Yeah. So that you're kind of, I'm trying to push myself a little bit farther than just saying, oh, you know, I'm, I feel sad. Um, I don't want to be here. There's there's so many different ways you could say that. Mm -hmm. No, it's very true. It's uh, it's fun being a singer. 
I think it's it, when you get to be the front guy, it it's a weird it's a weird experience because I'm so used to being behind an instrument. So when I'm like kind of out of my out of my element as just a vocalist, you know, I can't hide behind my guitar or my drum kit or I'm just standing there. Like it's a weird it's a weird thing. Just there. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Especially as a metal singer, because you have to be able to bring a, such a high energy that it takes a lot out of you live. Because mm -hmm. you're screaming, you're singing. From now on, we'll just. Uh, what, Norm? From now on, we'll just uh, put a podium in front of you. So. I stand <laughs> there. <laughs> you can pretend like you're giving speeches or something. <laughs> right? No, it's true. Yeah. How, how's your guys' local scene? Mm, uh, it was it was good for uh quite a few years um i'd say about 16 17 um some of the venues started closing down slowly you know one at a time and then uh you know when when covid 19 hit man i saw so many places close that were like staples in certain areas um and we've recently uh hooligans hooligans in jacksonville north carolina is what kind of what we consider home um our home venue and they just brought back rock bands and they're trying to kind of build up the scene a uh, close friend of ours johnny cut who's like a tour manager for a couple of different bands touring um he's now their i believe manager or you know talent buyer however you want to call it and he's really trying to bring that scene back and build it up and get the local bands interested and get the people coming out regularly. But it's it's a fight because we're still under this COVID-19, you know? Mm -hmm. So some people are like, uh, yeah, I want to go see a show, but I don't think it's safe yet, so I'm going to sit at home. <laughs> no, and that's it's tough. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Especially, I know that places in the States are opening up now. So I could see it being a bit of back and forth, you know? People are the ones who are really just don't give a shit. And they're like, fuck it, I don't want a live show. And then people are like, well, I'll go in a couple of months when yeah. things ease up. So, yeah, I could see that being mm -hmm. difficult for shows right now. I know that Texas has had a really good out, uh, like, um, turnouts for their shows. Which is badass, and uh, I hope yeah. that things open. And they're up. kind of pretty wide open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. It's weird for musicians. It's a really weird time for us, especially like you guys have been around since 2010. You said so. Like you were playing in the perfect time when we had like flyers and all age shows, and you had a lot of younger kids coming to shows because we weren't so focused on yep. bars. So, like, those were the times in my eyes, you know, like Absolutely. the MySpace days. <laughs> right. That's, we, we, we were a MySpace band. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's weird how it, how it transitioned over. Yeah. But, dude, we used to pack out places just from, you know, invites from MySpace. People are were looking for those types of things. You know, 18-year-olds like, man, I need something to do. They're coming to the shows. Yeah. I miss those days. I miss the days when you had, like, dedicated people going. Those were always, like, the best times to perform, I found. Yes, absolutely. When you had a real following... There's groups of people coming to see you. And we, we had uh, probably 2012 to 14. Dude, we were playing every weekend, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, in different cities in North Carolina. And we'd see the same people, you know. We're like, oh, what's up, man? <laughs> I just saw you guys last night. Thanks for coming out, you know. Yeah. No, those are that's kind of how we build our fan base. No, and yeah. it's true. Like that's 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 what I miss. Like I miss uh, some of my really good buddies, like my good friend Alex and his girlfriend. They've come to my shows since I was in my first band, 
and I've seen them at every, mm. didn't matter whether I was like hip hop or DJing or in a rock band, they were always at the show supporting. So I, I love fans that are that dedicated and just like genuine, oh. like I'll never, you know, you never forget those ones. Those are the, that's why we do it in my eyes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. I noticed that uh, there's a lot of really cool changes happening too in our underground scene. There's a lot of um, connection in our community online, which is a nice thing to see because it's it, it almost it's almost yeah um, back to those times of MySpace. Well, you know, it's the same idea, but with this new technology, and we're like, hey, we can we can connect and work together here, and we don't even have to be in the same spot, you know. Um, like us, we have some like brother bands that uh, we share their content. You know, they have a show, we're going to support them. We'll go out to the show and tell our fans, hey, man, go see Death of Uriah or go see Hollow Intent, and we're trying to get back to that because you know all of these fans are they're metal fans they're rock fans they're going to go to the rock shows so let's just create a, this family like it used to be mm -hmm. mm, no it's true it's uh it's a it's a really weird time especially with facebook and the social media platforms because as much as they get us out, it also makes it a little harder for us to be able to be seen. That's true. I find it's like... Well, we've tried to do, uh, utilize like the... Go ahead. The Facebook Live mm -hmm. stuff like... That. And we've tried to utilize the, you know, Facebook Live and people that aren't coming to the shows, Hey, you can see us here. You can still kind of share that experience with us and you don't have to come out, but it's still strange. <laughs> yeah. It's a weird, uh, it's created like a weird popularity contest. I always say almost like the more likes you have, mm. the better your music is. And I mean, yeah, the more likes you have just means you've been around longer in my eyes. You know what I mean? You've, you've taken the time to to right. work on it, but like those overnight successes that you see in pop music, like that doesn't happen in metal and rock. No. Mm -mm. No. You gotta build and build and build and plan and build and follow, you know, execute the plan, change the plan, <laughs> keep building. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. You definitely have to... Uh, think outside the box nowadays you do you know i was just looking at um some videos so i really enjoy going and seeing um like the history of, of bands and kind of how they made it to their point mm -hmm. and i was on youtube looking at uh nothing more nothing more is uh you know they're they've become one of my new favorite bands um but looking at the history they've been around for years years and years and i like going and seeing their shows you know from 20 20 uh 2010 or 2008 and then looking at the new arena tours and you're like dude look at that that shift that they did mm -hmm. but it was just grinding and you know keep on the songs and well, let's work on the, the live show and make sure we're interesting. And That's the band that does Jenny, right? It's just cool to see that progression. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how their singer and, used know, to it, be their drummer. It felt like they just kind of came, came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy, right? And they're all drum corps. Like, they all went to school and play um, snare drums and the, and the mid-tom drums and... Yeah, man, their their bass player, like he's uh -huh. an electrical engineer, and he created that crazy ass like scorpion machine that they do the Skrillex cover on. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, they're a, yeah. They're a really cool band. And I think that's kind of what you have to do now, right? 
Well, that's you. Know, that's true. You do. You got to create. Oh, and they, it's not really a gimmick for them. It's just you know, mm-hmm. they they built their show with what was natural to them, and then worked on it and worked on it and worked on it, and now look at them. Yep. Yeah, and no, uh, and then there's a lot of bands, you know, that I think Maynard from Tool is my favorite. When people are like, You're, "I'm too old," this it's too, I'm getting too old. Like Maynard didn't get picked mm-hmm. up with Tool until he was like 36. And like, look how big Tool is yeah, now. Right. That's the one thing I think I hate when They're people huge. say, <laughs> "Yeah, right." Like <laughs> they I don't even have to Tool. Yeah, they don't even have to hang out together to write. <laughs> yeah. <Mm-mm. laughs> They've been doing that a long time ago. No, it's it's the that mentality of I'm too old, I think, is one thing that's killed a lot of musicians that could have been greats just because they thought they were too old and they had to get their backup job. In reality, I don't right, know. Right. We've all been doing this for minimum 10 to 15 years. You know, like it's not, not ever going to stop. Until we're, until we're happy and we're finished, or we can't sing anymore. I think that's where I'm gonna be. Yeah. Like the lead singer from While She Sleeps. I get um, that. Yeah. <laughs> Laws Taylor, I think his name is. He's had like four vocal surgeries. Every album, he basically has had a vo- oh, vocal wow. surgery. <laughs> but he's still just like he keeps going. You know what I mean? So it's the dedication. I always say that like metal and rock bands have the most hardworking ethic, like the hard work, like the, the amount of effort that we put into our bands and how many times we're told no. And how many times we go and play to nobody showing up. You know what I mean? Like these are the things that make us tough, I guess, you know, it makes our, our skin thick. And I think that it, um, absolutely. Yeah, I th- I think it makes us a a unique breed. I always say that we're a unique breed. We really are. You know, we I was talking to uh, some of the members about um, bands we used to play with. You know, back when we were you know playing shows every weekend, um, playing with the same bands and stuff, and building that brotherhood and stuff. And so many of the bands just break up for whatever reason. And I don't know how we did it because we still had issues. We had major, major things going on with like, you know, didn't work out with the label toward all that stuff. Um, and I was, I was like, you know, we're, we have this fan base and this larger fan base because we just stayed together. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it seems like those are the bands that go on and, and can actually make money doing it. You know the the percentage is is crazy when you're looking at the bands that are great but don't don't work out and we're like well if you just stay together and keep writing music at the end you, you you're gonna get some kind of payback from it yeah. and I just feel like we're uh, we're in that place where we're like okay it's starting to it's gonna start to pay off with the bigger shows and just having more people listen to us and share and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's really um, I remember watching it. Uh, I remember watching an interview with uh, someone from Lamb of God. And I think they just uh, released Ashes of the Wake, did the whole tour for Ashes of the Wake, opening up for, I think Slayer took them on tour for, mm-hmm. for, for that um, album release. And once they were done that tour, they were still coming back to, um, where are they from? Iowa or something? No, or, from uh, Richmond. Richmond. Virginia. Richmond, yeah, Virginia. 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 And uh, um, they were still working their day jobs. Yep. And that, that album was huge for them. Right. And that, and that was also after 10 years of, of, of kicking at it, right? Well, longer than that, because they were burning the scene, priest yep. before. They just changed their name. Yeah, absolutely. Right? So they've been a band cool. for a long fucking time. And that's that's what I mean. Like, Chris and Willie have been together forever. You know what I mean? So it's a... Mm-hmm. It, 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 sometimes you have to just yeah keep pushing. And I know a lot of bands who have changed their name. Like, I don't remember... Do you remember Alpha mm-hmm. Baby, Norm? 
the local band Alpha Baby? I don't. Well, they're Yukon Blonde now. Like, they changed their name, moved to Vancouver, oh, I... and ended up, now they're touring full time. You know what I mean? Like, it's, sometimes you just kind of have to take that, that change and roll with it. Whether it's new members or changing your name and having the same members, it's, the hard work yeah. and dedication that you put in definitely pays in the long run. You see it. You're right. And I find that the best feeling too is the moment you get on stage, you know, like nothing, nothing matters after that. You get sound check done. You start there and then all of a sudden you see the crowd filling in and then just like you get to step on stage. The moment that the first guitar and the drums, like that, the the hi hat, you know, that four hits of the hi hat, or China, and the song starts. Everything, all yeah, all yeah. that bullshit just fades away. <laughs> it's like, yep, it's all worth it. So it's been really Let's hard go. for musicians. I tell my wife, uh, it's kind of like a drug that what that you're what you're describing, like that's the drug. And we're like crackheads always on this like <laughs> hurt so high. Like, I got to get on stage, man. Oh, oh I, need, I need it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'll share this post. I'll share this post. Yeah, I don't care. I just need to get back on stage. Right. You're right. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's it's definitely euphoric. And people don't realize, like I always talk about it, that there's like this weird telepathical connection with bands where you don't even have to talk after a certain point at practice, you know, you just like, you start playing through the songs and you all know what you're doing. Yeah. And it's weird, especially live mm -hmm. live. There's like moments where the drummer just wants to fuck with you. And he just like, you know, he puts a fill in, but you knew ahead of time he was going to put a fill in there. So you all just like account <laughs> for it. <laughs> I find, right. I find you roll it's, with it. Yeah, exactly. Like, Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, and I think that that's... Bass think... player turns around, man, you're going out of town, what the hell? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. And I find that, um, I don't know, it's just a cool bond, being in a band. Most people don't won't understand it. There's only, like, I've heard one person relate. The only thing they could ever relate being in a band to was being in the military. That That unwritten brotherhood, you know what I mean? And I could totally see that. Like bands exactly. definitely yeah. stick up for each other and the, they do anything for each other. It's weird, especially metal bands. Cause we like to act like we're not emotional people, but in reality, we're like if one member is upset and sad. We're like, we got you, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> so <Right. laughs> we all got the biggest hearts. And I think that's cause we get to get it out. We're like, we scream. And everybody else is like holding it in because they're scared, and we're like, "Fuck it, we're the happiest people ever." Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, because we have therapy, therapy sessions. Exactly. Is there uh, anything? If there was anything in the industry that you guys would change, what do you think it would be? Ooh, that's a tough one. You know. Um, I think back to the whole Metallica Napster uh, issue and how that's when music changed for musicians, you know, and it, it wasn't just Napster, it was, you know, LimeWire or whatever websites they had because I'm old enough to remember having to go to a CD store and buy CDs and that's how I found my new music and it was this experience that I I really enjoyed and it was it was kind of sacred you know like unveiling unveiling this new whatever it was a tray you the new a tray you album um so i i tend to lean against the streaming services just because you're taking that personalized piece away now you know kids are just listening to the single and they're like, oh, I like that single, add it to my playlist and keep rolling. They don't really dive into the full catalog of a band and getting the history. And, you know, you don't have the magazines like you used to. So you're not getting the inside scoop about Corn and how their tour was in 95 or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it changed a lot. 
you know? Yeah. And so I would do something to make it more personal. I don't know what that is or looks like, but something to bring that back to where, you know, people are really interested in bands and want to know everything about them. Yeah, that appreciation. I remember facts from a magazine in 2000 from Deftones, where I was like, man, I love Deftones. And then I found out, okay, they're from Bakersfield. Okay, you know, they went to high school together. Like, I know that stuff still. Mm -hmm. And that was 20 years ago, you know, or however long. Yeah, no. It's just crazy. I remember an article. My son, uh, he... Go ahead. It just, you know, my, my son kind of listens to singles. Like, that's what he does. And he doesn't know anything about the artist. He doesn't, he barely knows the artist's name. I'm like, well, why, why are you even listening? Oh, it's just a cool song. No, <laughs> we, that, that was not us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was not. He's 17. So, you know, he's around the same time age uh where i was getting into bands and like new metal and stuff and i was diving deep dude like i wanted to know where each member was born and what their interests were and <laughs> yep i don't know no i was the same way 100 percent. i'm I, I like to say i'm a walking encyclopedia of useless music knowledge just because of that like i remember reading an article about mick thompson talking about what he did between the recording of Iowa and subliminal verses. And, uh, he talked about perfecting the perfect cylindrical shit and mastering the art of giving girls rim jobs. And that, that, that just that interview with Mick Thompson from Slipknot, it always stuck in my head because he was just so weird. So I found it, uh, I find it funny when like you do get to meet, the artist for who the artist is you know what i mean and i think that's why we created what we did with this because it is nice to have people get to know artists for the artist and not for just these random performances they don't really connect with us so it's nice when you can get to know the band and those like funny stories that bands have like we were talking with Antagonist, I think it was, and they were talking about some homeless guy mm. trying to fight them while he was holding a burger. And, like, those are the stories that, you know, you'll never hear from anyone else, but they had happened to them. And it's, like, the funniest stories happen to bands, and I think that people, I think that love for bands comes from that, getting to know them. But it does, like you said, there's no magazines yeah. out there anymore, and people aren't really... Uh, as in in tune with it anymore like that the up and coming no, new, like you don't even know when an album comes out anymore really one of my favorite bands just released an album two weeks ago and i didn't know until spotify told me they had a new single and then i looked and i'm like oh shit there's a new album so like there's no news outlets for music anymore which is like there's a there's a select few no. um websites and stuff like that but yeah no like there's really not there's really not anyone who is promoting the news. And that is, it's become a really difficult time for artists to get exposure. Yeah. Well, what it feels like for, you know, for us over here in the States, it's, if you're not on serious octane, then nobody knows, nobody finds out. Like that is the major one. Um, so if you're on the billboard charts, you're going to Octane and that's how people are finding you. But otherwise, if you're not at that level, yeah. No. Nobody knows. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And that's outside of your immediate. Yeah, and I mean that that's what does make things a little bit difficult for emerging artists, right? Because how are we supposed to get to that level if no one ever gives you the time of day to get you to that level? So it definitely becomes a, a catch-22, I guess. Like, you mm -hmm. kind of have to deal with the streaming services to gain exposure, but then you have to also realize that, like, you're not yeah. going to get anywhere with that if things don't work out. So it makes it hard. Is 
Is there anything you guys want to say before we wrap Nothing up? about our industry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, definitely hard. Nothing about our industry is easy. It's not like rap and pop where, you know, everything just falls in place for you. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I find that the metal scene, at least the metal industry, it, uh, it has this, I always say it has like a weird stigma to it where people are almost scared of it. And I think the, yeah. the the mainstream is scared of it mainly because it causes unity. You know, like they see how strong yep. metal festivals are and how united they are. And it's music is one of the only things that could unite people. And I think that if I think metal would be the one type of music that could really unite the world if it was brought to the light. Because I feel that metal musicians have I agree this unity purpose. They always like to unite people. I mean, they've spent how many other artists out there have mastered their craft to the level that musicians in metal have. Like, I don't know any pop stars that can pick up a guitar and play like Ingve Malmsteen. You know what I mean? <laughs> or Alexi Leho. So like there's a talent factor in metal that's completely overlooked just because it's loud and aggressive. When in reality, like yeah. they're the most talented musicians on the planet, you know, like, I, and also, I mean, our industry with, with rock and metal and stuff like that, how many lives were saved because they listened to a song you wrote? I mean, my life was saved before I listened to a song and I was just like, wow, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's worth living. You know, and I've had people come to us at our concert saying, wow, that song has really touched me and saved my life. Uh, I mean, you can't get that from pop shaking their asses or talking about raping women or mm -hmm. fucking bitches or whatever it is pulling all 24s you you don't get that kind of reaction i mean i mean it's a it's a nice beat it's a cool hooky song but you you can't reach somebody on a personal level where they understand every lyric that was written every riff you know relates to them and helps them through any kind of like real life situation they can mm -hmm not necessarily hide themselves in our music, but they're able to listen to it and help them through a rough time. Yeah. I mean, if anyone thinks that pop music and rap music is more talented than metal or has more of a message, I mean, go listen to Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. Go sit there with some headphones on, listen to that song, and tell me that that does not bring up emotion. You know, like, I'm a 30-year-old man, oh, and yeah. I still, to this day, cannot listen to that song with headphones on without get tearing up because I understand how much emotion that Trent had. You know what I mean? Like, you don't get that in hip-hop. Yep. Like, I've never heard a, a rap song that had a dude crying while recording the lyrics because he couldn't keep himself together. <laughs> you know? So there's, there's an no. emotional factor with the music that we play and rock music, and it's in reggae, too. It's in a lot of things, and I think that it's... I think I hate I hate ripping on it because I do love electronic music, but I think that the rise of electronic music, dubstep, and all that destroyed live music and the appreciation for musicians. Absolutely. Because now just some dude in his house can write a cool beat and make millions of dollars, and somebody can buy a beat off yeah. them and become a famous pop star overnight. It takes no talent to do that. It really doesn't. Most of these people don't mm -hmm. even write their own lyrics. They pay for the lyrics to be written. So yep. you're, you're making these people famous and millions of dollars and they didn't do a fucking thing, you know? And that, that really, it, it drives me nuts. Like I always rant about it, but it like, it's something that I, it drives me nuts because we've dedicated so much time, effort, energy, relationships for bands. Like I know tons of people who've given up relationships because they're, they were given the ultimatum. I've done it. You know, music will always mm -hmm. come first. That's a hands down. You know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Music will always be my number one because it's hey, the I one thing that kept me alive. I wouldn't be here without it. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm it's, it's a special thing. 
And I think that most people, if they actually took this, the two seconds to step back and realize how much they need music in their life, I think that things would maybe change for us. Mm -hmm. And in time, I think that will happen. Now that live music's starting to happen again, and bands are starting to get out there and exposed, and it's 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 a perfect time for us. It's it's the time where we become appreciated. Is right now at the end of COVID. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. 100%. Is there anything you guys want to say before we wrap up? Sauce? Um, you know, we appreciate all our fans. And we appreciate you guys for having us on your show, man. That's pretty awesome. No worries. Anytime. Um, you know, I have nothing but mad love. Who has supported us, who listens to our music. Um, we know what time is. I mean, we put in a lot of time. So just for you guys taking the time to just chat with us is awesome. And we're just very appreciative of uh, all the support. Well, next, when you guys release what some new said. music. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys release some new music, uh, let um, us know. We're actually. Uh... Okay, we can definitely do that. Absolutely. We, we, Absolutely. we were just talking about uh, starting to write the next um series the uh, new ep um last night we were talking about it and so it'll be coming right you guys, oh yeah and you just released it that's what the best part about this is how much we can blast out that's what i'm excited for how much new music will come out in the next six months is going to be the most coolest thing ever i'm excited you're right well, when you guys... Uh, a lot's coming. A lot's coming. Right. We'll definitely have you guys back on anytime. So just let us know when you guys want to come hang out again. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. You stay safe and we'll be in contact. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much, man. All right. Peace, guys. You. Cheers, guys. Hell yeah. Peace. Awesome. Thank you, guys.